If you have one of these solar charge controllers, you may have the similar problem to what we had. This is an ACL power. Some of them are known under the name of EP Ever. There's a lot of these on the market under different names, but inside they're all the same. I've taken the liberty of loosening the screws, taking everything apart for you. But normally there are two fuses located here. And when these break, that's generally what breaks on them. We're gonna do a very easy, simple modification to it that will allow you to change the fuses without opening it up. So first thing you need to do is actually remove the fuses from there. And that's easily done with a soldering iron. So you simply heat up the fuses and with the soldering iron, you can remove them. Next, one of these fuse holders that are commonly available, you can get them on auto parts store, Amazon, wherever, and put some spade connectors on it. And the spade connectors will solder right in to where the fuse used to be. As you can see, we've soldered in these leads with the fuse holders. And now we have to put what holds the circuit board in, back on. That's a spring-loaded part. Keeps the proper tension on the circuit board. Here you can see the springs and how this is made. So with expansion and contraction due to heat, it keeps the circuit board tightly pressed up against the heat sink, which is this big aluminum plate. Now what are we going to do with these four wires here? Well, to simplify it, we'll drill the fuel holes in the side of the unit. Like so. And using zip ties, we're going to attach the fuse holder. Tighten that down. We'll do the same on the other side. Now the fuse holder is held in. We'll have to do the same with this one, which will go there. And we have to make little slots in the casing to hold these wires in. Once we figure out exactly where they go. So there we have it. Now the fuse holders are attached. They're in their place. We just have to mark this housing so to do so, we'll leave the wires where they are, where they naturally want to go. And loosely put this back on. Next, we cut the housing.
four screws on the back, hold everything together. In our case, this is a 40 amp solar controller and it had two 35 amp fuses. So we're going to replace it with the same size fuses, 35 amps. If yours is a 20 amp, a 30 amp, or a 60 amp, depending on which solar controller you have, you'll have to take note of what fuses yours has before taking it apart. If it's a larger 60 amp unit, you may have to increase the wire size. If you put the bigger uh, wires, it's not, uh, it's more safe. Yes, the bigger the wire, the safer it is. So there we have the finished insulation. These holders came with a 40 amp fuse, but we're putting in a 35, which is what we took out of the circuit board and replaced with these wires. Put that in, put the cap on it. And now our solar charge controller is ready to go back to work. And should there ever be a problem with blown fuse again, we won't have to take it off of our installation, nor will we have to take it out of the bus. or take it apart to change a fuse. Let me just look at what I'm doing. There we go. Make sure the fuse is well seated, covered up. Now we have a functioning solar charge controller again that we can easily change the fuses on should we need to. There's other types of fuse holders on the market. You might be able to have a prettier installation than what we have here, but this will work for our needs. Once again, if you ever have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, please leave them below. We'll be happy to answer.